To show you these new brushes today they um, you put water inside them I don't know if you all can see that and you screw them on and they're ready to go for travel and you just pinch them this one has a little bit of red in it and you can see that they come out with water now if you want to clean it out then you pinch it again and it rub it on your rag and it'll clean out okay so it's pretty quick to do, and I've got some wide brushes and some thin brushes. These are the ones I'm going to be using today. But before I do that, I just want to show you kind of how I started this project, okay? So somebody had asked us to do feathers, and so I thought I would. So let me show you kind of what, where we're going. I'm going to first show you how to create these kind of um, loose watercolor feather paintings. We're first going to draw some shapes onto white color white watercolor paper. I cut it into four strips and I've drawn a couple of leaves on there already. And then we're going to paint them to this step. And then I'm going to show you using some of the ones that are already dry how to get something sort of like this. Okay, it'll be a different style. And these are not realistic. They're just sort of fun and playful um, ways to draw feathers. Okay, so let's get down to business. I'm going to set these aside. We'll embellish those later. I've already got these two here, so let me just show you how to draw a simplified um, feather shape really quickly using a pencil, and then we're going to do this watercolor really quickly. Okay, so you can start by drawing a center. I sometimes like to just kind of play with the shape before. This one is sort of weird shaped. I'm not sure if I like it. I think I'm going to turn it over and try something different. And then maybe I might come in here and do some breaks in the feather and erase the inside parts. Okay. So something like that, and then down here maybe. And you can do, um, you know, cutaways as much as you want. Just keep it kind of light. And then we're going to bring our, the, I don't know what you call that, the, the core of that feather up that way. I wish I had moved it up a little bit to leave a stem on this one, but that's okay. We'll just work with it. Okay, so I'm going to take eraser and I'm going to get, because I drew kind of dark. I drew dark because I wanted you to be able to see these, but you don't really want to draw quite so heavy handed when you're um, doing your own. Just a, a light Just a light little line to show you where to paint, okay? So mine's a little bit heavy-handed, but that's all right. Now, I have these three here, and we're going to get our watercolor brush, and we're going to lay in some color, okay? I'm going to start um, with this really bright red. I'm going to um, squeeze a little water out. I think this is a Lizrin Crimson uh, Grumbacher watercolor. And I'm going to just lay in some, some places here. Oops, I didn't get enough water in that. I better got a little bit of a blob. I'm going to actually start at the tips of these. And I'm going to um, come back in in a minute with some more water. But we're going to start at the tips. And then, of course, I said before, this is very stylized. It's not realistic. And of course, now that I'm filming, my neighbor has decided that she's gonna bang on something because that's the way it goes. And it's okay with this, with this particular one, you can, I mean, I'm gonna actually cut mine out. So I don't have to be super neat with the, um, the outlines, but if you wanna be neat, be neat. <laughs> 
I'm going to do a little darker red here. And then I'm going to kind of fade this out. Okay, and I'm going to um, water it down and I'm going to clean my brush out a little bit. I'm going to get some of that pigment out, okay? So now it's just going to be a wash and I'm going to go ahead and wash this in here. Just put water and mix it with the pigment that's already there, okay friends? Lovely. I'm going to pull some of this pink out, or this uh, cadmium, oh, alizarin crimson, excuse me. Saying the wrong colors. Okay, now uh, let's go ahead and rinse this out. And let's put some purples in there. I've got this, I forget what this color is called. It's a purple color, but it has a fancy name and I'm not sure. I got these out of an old um, set that I have. Now let's do some interesting things. Let's go ahead and pull some purple for this stem. It will blur quite a bit and that's okay. And then let's do a couple of little lines like this. We're gonna keep this really simple for right now. And I am just laying in some interest, areas of interest with purple. And then we are actually going to leave that just like that, okay? And move on to our next one. Okay, so this one. We might do this one. Well, you know, I haven't really done a brown. I guess we could do brown. I really kept it kind of bright colors on the other ones, but this is a... Uh, burnt umber kind of color. So let's lay in some super darks here and then we're going to fan it out quite a bit. Maybe even um, clean our brush just a little bit. I may go in with some some yellow. I may come over here with my flat brush and pick up some of this yellow. Maybe even some of this burnt umber down here or yellow ochre. And let's give some variance to this. Now I'm going to wet it first with this pale yellow. And then I'm going to come in and lay some of this bright stuff in. And I'm going to blend this quite a bit here. Okay, and then maybe we want to put some um, some areas of color that are darker, just to give it interest. This sort of looks more leaf-like, but we'll sort of come back to it. And we can even feather out these ends a little. You see how my paintbrush just sort of comes out at the end a little. We can feather those out. We can end up cutting those off if we want or just leaving them just slightly. Let's give this feather some little tiny outward wispy hairs. Okay and on this one I'm gonna pull some salt Let's put some salt on because some of the other ones that I'm going to do for you had salt. So let's put some salt on this and let that do its little happy, happy thing. I don't know if you all can see that. It's going to put some texture on, okay? And if you'd like to see what that texture looks like when it's dry, let me show you. Can you see it right here? It's kind of hard to see. It puts some little tiny polka dots on there because the salt will absorb some of the water and the pigment, creating some texture on the surface of the watercolor paper. 
Okay, one more. Let's see here. Maybe I want to do a blue one now. I love this blue color. So I think I'm going to be really crazy with this one. I'm going to squeeze out some really weird colors. Oh my gosh, I love it. That's super bright. Then I'm going to come in here and just squirt water. And I am actually going to let this guy go all over the place. I'm not going to paint him specifically. I'm going to let him um, get a little bit wiggy. So, I don't know if you can see that, but it is beautiful. Maybe we need a few places where we're going to put in some, some yellows. Well... So I am literally just going to wreck this by wriggling water over the places that already have paint and just letting it see what it's going to do. Okay? I hope you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm just sort of running it and I'm not even going to try to fill in the whole feather. Now this is going to take a long time to dry, but, oh, but it'll be so pretty when it's done. And if you paint it first before you put those blobs of paint on, um, it'll only run where the water is. So that's kind of a cool way to control I am just swirling this around and you really have to get where you like you're just having fun okay don't try to control it too much I'm gonna come in here with a few purples and squeeze my brush maybe a little up here and then I also want to do some yellows I got a little purple on that brush so let me Get some of these yellows with some water, and we're going to drop in. And this is wet on wet technique, okay? And I am literally going to just let that do its thing. So that's kind of how I did some of these other ones, okay? Um, we're going to let that guy go and dry a little bit. He's going to be there for quite some time because he's pretty wet. But that's what I did with these. I kind of just ran and let colors run into each other okay so now let's move on to part two as soon as I move this I'm gonna to need to move this out of the way for the video so I'm gonna put this other piece of paper to transport it and we're gonna let it just sit over here and do its little happy thing and now I'm gonna move away from these brushes okay and you can still use them but I'm actually gonna come back in um, with these dry things and a bunch of acrylic markers because this is step two. Once they're dry, I, you can see I've taken a brush and I have rubbed the salt off of the surface. I don't know if you all can see that. So these had salt on them. I don't think I put salt on this orangish yellow one. So let's do some work with our acrylic markers on this surface. Okay, so I have these acrylic markers that I'm using. These are Arteza, what I used on my floral motif um, project that we did. All right, so I'm going to shake these up and just show you how you can sort of create um, some new looks. I'm taking a darker color, and I'm doing some, like, first some outline areas here on this feather. And then maybe I'm going to go ahead and do a darker line for the center. And just do a couple of little fine hairs. Maybe 
Maybe even some of them sort of come off the edge a little bit, putting them kind of close together. And then maybe there's just a few here. And some of the other ones, maybe they're going to be a little, uh, a little bit lighter. This is sort of a little bit lighter blue than that last blue. But over here, it's going to be looking a little darker. And maybe as we go up here, they sort of turn white. I don't know. We'll just see how it works. So I'm coming back in here. Maybe some of these are going to be... Ooh, that has a little bit of yellow on it. That's all right. We'll just go with it. So we are taking some of that color that's already on there and creating some other areas of interest. I may have to come back in with black a little bit and I'm coming in here into these areas and I'm going in between some of those lines that we already did. Lovely. And then I may get a darker blue and do the inner part again. Sort of highlight that back out. And then let's do some lights and darks. So maybe where the feather is being hit on the surface, it's lighter. And then maybe it gets a little bit dark at the tip and at the bottom. You know, just sort of haphazardly creating uh, that feathery pattern and the texture that we're looking for. All right, I might go back to this dark here. Rolling in another layer. Really stylized. To create some uh, neatness here. I may end up cutting cutting that off. I don't know how I feel about it. So you basically get the idea. You're just sort of creating a new kind of look to it. guy kind of dried up a little bit. I'm adding some greens at the tip just for interest, drawing them down into the feather a little bit just to create depth. And you can do all this with watercolor too. I just was kind of being fun. All right, now I'm going to go in with black and white. So I am going to go and outline with this chisel edge, wanting to keep my lines super fluid, kind of quick. We don't want it to be too static and... I mean, the reality is you can... Do it over if you don't if you don't like it. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and create um, like there's a black line here and a black line here on the feather. Ooh, this is getting a little bit chalky. Sometimes they get like that. And then we're going to come bring some sh shading in here. Maybe there's another one. 
here. And here. We're going to kind of bring those little feather places down like it's wisping. And as I said, this is not realistic. It's just kind of a fun thing to do. All right, then we're going to add some white in. We're going to pretend like this feather has some white places on the edge here. Nice, I like it. Okay, and maybe we want a few polka dots that are this other color green. Okay. All right, so you can kind of see that we have created these two feathers. And um, I will maybe do the rest of them and put them at the beginning of the video as a picture, okay? But that's kind of how you do it. And we still have, I still have a couple more that I have to work on that I'll do that. And then um, you'll be able to see those at the as the picture, okay? And then what I did after I finished the those as I just cut them. I like them cut out and then I can put them on something. I can use them for a bookmark or hang them up as a mobile or make it gift tag out of it. You know, there's all kinds of stuff you can do with it or use it in your painting. You know, like a collage piece. Okay. So Feel free to just sort of experiment. I, I suggest that you actually work with more than one at a time just to make it less serious and give yourself chances to experiment. Don't try to just like copy everything. Just go with the flow. Give it a shot. See how it goes and, and kind of do your own, your own thing. Because this is not like anything I've seen, and mine are a little bit different. I was getting a little overwhelmed trying to come up with somebody else's plan for this. And I just thought, you know, I'm just going to get in there and see what happens. But you, when you cut it out, you start to see that it takes on a sort of form um, of its own. Okay? So uh, I'll see you next time. I hope you've enjoyed this feather tutorial. Bye, everybody. Have a great day.